So we can actually screen embryos in advance of putting a pre-embryo back into the uterus for the right or wrong number of chromosomes. We not only want 46, but we want two of each. So distribution and total count is part of it. And this is called PGS, or pre-implantation genetic screening. This was introduced over 30 years ago. And the technologies have dramatically improved. As we began to do this more safely in the last decade, the initial screening was to look at one or two points on any one chromosome, almost like a marker in a neighborhood, to know, OK, that chromosome is present, and there is the right number. So maybe between 46 chromosomes and a marker on two points on it, you'd have 96 total points to know someone had the right number of chromosomes. And the marketing on this in our community was wonderful because they called it comprehensive chromosome screening when it was essentially the Model T of an automobile at the time. But if someone markets it as that, no matter what level, from that to a Tesla these days, you can always call it comprehensive transportation or comprehensive chromosome screening. But we really advanced the technologies from looking at 96 points to maybe 5.4 million points across the whole neighborhood of chromosomes. So it's gone to sort of like 4K or 8K video at this point. And that's a good thing because we can see more information. When genetic implantation genetic screening was first introduced, it was introduced and frankly marketed heavily as the greatest thing since sliced bread. And the problem is when you're only looking at 96 points, it's pretty inaccurate to give you good detail and we still want to know more, would we have a healthy baby? And the first studies, which gave us such great hope, were showing 70, 80 percent success if we put an embryo back that had a normal genetic screening test result. But those initial tests had some bias to it. They were testing women that already had a very good chance of getting pregnant, even if we didn't do the testing, that were 60 percent or so pregnancy rate without genetic screening, and we could push it to 70 or 80. So when everyone heard 70 or 80, that was great, except that doesn't apply to a woman who's 39 years old. Those studies were among young women who were getting on the average of 18 eggs harvested at a time. Now, most patients that are seeing, seeking our care, we may get eight, 10. It's not the same population, but it was promoted and marketed as the greatest thing. But what we've discovered in the past year, and the pendulum is swinging back, that, gosh, pregnancy rates across the entire group of folks needing help aren't that high. And even when we have the right number of chromosomes, miscarriages still occur, which tells us that it's not just about the number of chromosomes. So in our field, we're taking a deeper dive in realizing that there are what we call subchromosomal problems. Now, those that were promoting this great before, sliced bread, is sort of like saying, well, yeah, there can be some mold within it. And uh, everyone would go, yeah, we knew that all along. So those that are pushing for great outcomes are now realizing, well, there is more detail to still understand. And even though we can look at 5.4 million points along a chromosome, we don't have a good library to compare those points to what normal is or what normal isn't. Because if there are some variations somewhere within a chromosome, are those variations that are normal meaning differences between siblings, or would they cause a disease? And those are areas that we're still learning more about. To this point, we're also learning that when we test an embryo and we take a cluster of cells that'll be the placenta, not all cells may be the same, nor will those cells necessarily represent the inner cell area that'll form baby. So we might be wrong. In other words, we might interpret something being abnormal because of the particular cell we chose from the placenta tissue when baby may be okay. And so there is a margin of error here that's at least 1%. So our worry is not just to have a healthy baby, but not to discard an embryo that might lead to one. 